Well, for more on the future of cancer treatment and the challenges posed by the pandemic, we have one of the organizers of World Cancer Day, uh, oncologist Anil de Cruz. He joins us from Mumbai. Thanks for being with us, uh, Dr. de Cruz. First of all, how promising do you think mRNA technology is as a treatment for cancer? Uh, it, it's something that's evolving. It's one of the exciting new research avenues. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. There is a scientific basis in these vaccines, mRNA technology. Uh, it's not an area of my expertise because I'm a surgical oncologist, but uh, having been in the field for long, followed the progress, it has potential in the years to come. Now, some say that uh, cancer research has been neglected because of the focus on COVID-19. What's your take? Has cancer research suffered or benefited from the pandemic on the whole? Uh, COVID-19 has been a setback for cancer as a whole, whether it is uh, screening programs that were stopped, whether it was patients coming into the hospital, and probably we'll see the true impact of that in the, in the years to come, uh, whether it's on cancer research. A lot of it was put back on hold, but we are bouncing back and we are getting there. Uh, to me, I would see it as a plus and a minus as well. Uh, cancer research, now that COVID-19 is the number one priority, a lot of funds, a lot of efforts are diverted towards COVID. Uh, so it will have some impact on the cancer research. But then there's also the positive or the silver lining that there will be a cross effect. Uh, what we've learned from COVID, what we've seen that COVID uh, has done, it's exposed our healthcare systems, our, our, our ability to respond to these times of crisis. We mm. learn from the vaccine program of COVID, uh, health delivery systems, that could be positive uh, uh, impact on uh, cancer control, cancer care. Okay. Precisely whether it is gonna impact on research, I think the research will run parallel to what's being done for COVID. But the pandemic has led many people to skip medical checkups, as you're saying, also to stop exercising, stop eating properly. Are you worried that the pandemic has created a ticking time bomb of other health risks, not specifically related to COVID-19? I guess there's some truth in what you say. There is a nice Lancet publication that says because of COVID, there will be a late diagnosis and the implications, the ramifications will run for the next couple of years where people will present late, will have uh, uh, compromised uh, uh, outcomes. Uh, it's also true that uh, 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 lack of exercise, maybe faulty eating when they were locked up at home would have implications on the other non-communicable diseases. But I see the latter as less of a problem because slowly the world over, we've come to grips with COVID-19. We didn't know what really hit us, lack of knowledge. But now as we are getting to understand the impacts, people are coming back to their normal routine. And I don't think a five, six, eight month uh, change in lifestyle is going to have such a devastating effect on any of the non-communicable diseases. But yes, if people just continue this kind of the way they were in lifestyle, then probably in the years to come, they would be. But I really don't see that as so much of a problem in non other non-communicable diseases. Dr. Anil de Cruz, thank you very much for talking with us. Uh, Dr. de Cruz is an oncologist and president of the Union for International Cancer Control. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.